When I came home after a week long honeymoon, I heard noises coming from inside the house. I got scared that it might have been burglarized while we were gone. Did you hear that? Maybe there is someone in the house. Should we call the police? I asked my husband, but he didn't seem to be concerned at all. It's all right. He walked into the house as he assured me. I followed him in a haste and found my mother in law and sister in law inside. I was relieved to see that they were not thieves, but I wonder why they were there. They supposedly offered to take care of the house while we were away, so my husband had given them the key. I thought they were going to leave after we returned. It's going to be dark soon if you don't go home. I asked them. Let us take it easy today. They not only didn't leave, but took over the living room and started to take a shower without permission. I thought they would go the next day. The next morning, they didn't show any sign of it at all. When I came home from work, they were still there. I couldn't take it anymore, so I asked my husband to kick them out. His reply was, We all live together now. So, if you don't like it, you get out. He was asking me to leave instead. I said, okay, and left with only the bare necessities in my carry on case. My name is Izzy. I'm a 29 year old editor of a magazine. Three years ago, I met my current husband Alex through a friend. I had hardly been in a relationship before him. I was attracted to his decisive and dependable personality, unlike me. He said the love word first, and after three years of dating, he proposed to me and we got married. When we were looking around for a new house and a wedding venue, he made everything go smoothly and was very reliable. I enjoyed living with him in our new house, but my mother in law Kelly and sister in law Joe were my headaches. My father in law passed away about 10 years ago. Alex's family consists of Kelly and 27 year old Joe. I was worried that I wouldn't get along with them. We only had minimal contact with each other before we got married, so I thought we could continue to keep a good distance. However, after we got married, they started bothering me. Kelly called me almost every day. Can you increase my allowance just a little bit? I can't live a decent life with the current amount. Just $200 more is enough. She nagged me. Alex was in charge, so I told her to ask him instead of me. I'm sure you are spending extravagantly. That's why you can't give me more. You are supposed to take good care of your in law, or karma will bite you. She refused to listen to me and even blamed me for her problem. Other than that, she told me to visit her more and help her with the chores. And as a daughter in law, it was polite to send her favorite food every month. While she gave me lectures over the phone, Joe visited me unannounced. When I was cooking dinner, she often came over saying, I was in the neighborhood, so I thought to drop by. Is your dinner ready yet? I'm hungry. Please hurry up and let me eat. She relaxed on the sofa until it was ready and then left after she ate. I told her numerous times to give me a notice before she came by and also not to come so often. Don't mind me, I'm just stopping by. You can just feed me whatever. She didn't want to listen to me. And it was useless for me to keep arguing with her. I couldn't be too harsh on her because she was Alex's sister. When I told him that I wasn't happy with Kelly and Joe, he also warned both of them. So I didn't react strongly against them myself. Then, six months into our marriage, Alex and I decided to go on a honeymoon, which had been delayed due to our work schedule. The destination was Europe. And we enjoyed ourselves to the fullest and released our daily stress. After a week long trip without any hiccups, we returned to the house and heard the noises from inside. I got scared that there was a burglar. 
Did you hear that? Maybe there is someone in the house. Shouldn't we call the police? I asked Alex, but he didn't seem to be concerned at all. It's all right. He walked into the house as he assured me. I hurriedly followed him and found Kelly and Joe. I was relieved to see that they were not thieves, but I wondered why they were in the house. Oh, you're back! Give me a souvenir now! The bracelet I asked you for. Did you get it? Of course not. It's too expensive. While I was stunned, the three of them were chatting happily. Um, why are you guys here? Are you trying to say that our presence is a nuisance? An empty house is an easy target for burglars while you're on vacation. We went out of our way to protect it. You should be grateful. They offered to take care of the house while we were away, so Alex gave them the key. I told him that he should have talked to me about it. He responded that he didn't have time because they came to him at the last minute. What had been done was already done, so I tried to think that the house was safe thanks to them. I took a look around the house and found that every room was messy with their stuff. Joe's clothes were hung in large quantity in the closet, and the rest that didn't fit were piled up on the floor. In the living room, clothes, bags, remote controllers, comic books, and all sorts of things were thrown around, not only on the table, but even on the floor. I was exhausted after my flight, and I was frustrated to clean up all those things, but that wasn't a problem. I thought Kelly and Joe were going to leave after we arrived, but they didn't. It's going to be dark soon. If you don't go home now, I asked them. Let us take it easy today. They not only didn't leave, but they took over the living room and started to take a shower without permission. They totally made themselves at home. I thought they were going to leave the next day, but there was no sign of it the next morning. And they were still there when I came home from work. I told them that it was time for them to go home. We are family. You don't have to mind us. You can just pretend we are not here. They adamantly stayed put. Although I was told not to care about them, I was the one who cooked, cleaned, and did laundry. I didn't feel at ease at all. If I didn't get rid of them, even by force, they would have remained as long as they wanted. I decided to ask Alex to kick them out. I was cleaning up my room until he came home when I noticed that one of my perfume collections was missing. It was a limited edition that was no longer on sale and cost over $300. I had been using it carefully little by little. I panicked and asked Kelly about it, but she didn't even know I had perfume. When I questioned Joe, oh, I have it, and she pulled it out from her bag and handed it over. The bottle I got was almost empty. I had used it so carefully that I still had more than 6% of it left. It smells good, doesn't it? My friend liked it too, so I lent it to her. She showed no sign of apologizing, and I finally lost my temper. Why did you use it without asking me? What you're doing is theft. Didn't you learn that you shouldn't steal from others? What the hell? I only borrowed it for a moment. Why are you overreacting? If you just borrowed it, then give me back what you used. Fine, but it was already used, so I will give you half of the money. I don't want the money back. I want the same perfume back. You are so mean, just for the stupid perfume. I know that brand too. It shouldn't be so expensive. She looked up the price on her phone. Holy cow, why is it so expensive? Are you dumb spending $300 for perfume? If it's so important, why don't you look it up? It was more expensive than she thought, so she became upset with me. It's valuable to me, 
so I used it only inside the house. I never imagined that I would end up having a relative that comes into my room and uses my things without my permission. While we were arguing, Alex came home. What are you guys making a fuss about? Listen, Alex, I only used a little perfume, but she called me a thief. I left her complaining in the living room and told Alex what happened in the bedroom. I told him that I was out of patience and wanted him to get rid of them. Don't get so worked up about the little thing. And I haven't told you that they are going to live with us in this house. My mouth was agape hearing his unimaginable reply. My mom's house was old and some parts were falling apart. She was contemplating whether she should repair them or move out. We have spare rooms here, and she could save some money, so we decided to live together. Why didn't you talk to me about it? Do you own this house? I'm paying the mortgage too, right? Don't blame me. My mom took it upon herself to sell her house. Anyway, we are living together, so if you don't like it, you get out. He decided without discussing it with me, and even told me to leave. I felt my feelings for him fading away. I understand. I started packing the bare necessities in my carry-on case. Alex didn't try to stop me, but commented that I was immature to run away after a fight and walked out of the bedroom. Kelly and Joe were grinning at the sight of me packing and locked the door as soon as I walked out of the house. I had no intention of going back there and had no feelings in particular. Then I went to a hotel and called my boss, with whom I usually consulted on various matters, and asked for a few days off. I looked for an apartment during my days off, and informed my parents that I separated from Alex with an explanation. They asked me what I was going to do, and I told them I was going to get a divorce. In the meantime, Alex texted me once. When you are sorry, you can come back. Mom and Joe both say they would forgive you. When I called him to ask for a divorce, he at first resisted by saying, You are divorcing me over something like this? You just have to put up with it a little bit. He eventually understood that I was determined and agreed to it. From then on, Things proceeded smoothly, and the divorce was finalized in six months. I wanted to get rid of him ASAP, so we quickly went over the division of property, and I gave the house to him. We had been married for less than a year, and we were divorced. My friends and co-workers were worried about what had happened. If it was all me, I had shrugged them off and hadn't been able to talk about it. This time, I was so over it that I told them the details. They all said, that's impossible. I'm sorry you had to go through that. I was glad to have told them as they sympathized with me, which made me feel a bit better. After I started living alone, I worked harder than ever before. Instead of spending time on chores, I took up three times as many projects as usual and even supported those who were overwhelmed. My boss was concerned about me, but when I became alone, the memories of the hard times popped up in my mind, and I started blaming myself. I was grateful to devote myself to work. While I was submerged in work, Alex called me about five months after my divorce. I had left most of my belongings behind when I left the house. I answered the phone, thinking it might be about that. At first, he asked me what I was doing and whether I was living alone. He didn't want to get to the point. I thought it was unusual, as he was the kind of person who got cranky if anyone waffled. I didn't want to waste my time, so I asked him the purpose of his calling. He said he wanted to get back together with me. I had no intention of it, so I said no and tried to hang up the phone. He rushed to stop me. Wait! 
There is something I hadn't told you yet. What is it? I'm busy, so hurry up. Can you lend me some money? I'm struggling to pay my mortgage. It used to be paid for by both of us, so I knew it must have been hard to bear the burden alone. I also knew it wasn't that much of an amount his salary couldn't cover. He explained that he expected to get a raise a few months ago, but it didn't happen. He was also told that there wouldn't be a chance of it in the future at his current performance. If that was the case, he decided to change jobs. He thought it was going to be easier to find one with better conditions. The reality was that he could only find one that paid less, and he hadn't been able to change jobs yet. Whatever the reason, I didn't want to lend him money. I told him not to call me anymore. You're still single, right? No one will take a not so young divorcee. You'd better get back together with me. I simply said, No, thank you, and hung up the phone. I didn't understand why I fell in love with and married him. I was so disappointed in my lack of discernment. After that, not only Alex, but also Kelly and Joe started harassing me many times. I found out from the conversations with them that they believed Alex was making a good income, all because of us buying a new house and having a big wedding. When their allowance wasn't increased, and Alex kept refusing to do so, they thought that I was preventing it. They rejoiced that they could live a comfortable life after I left, but his salary was less than they expected. When they realized that the life they envisioned was disappearing, they called me in panic. They must have thought men were paid more than women, but my salary was higher than his. I wanted to block them all on my phone, but Alex knew where I worked. I was worried he would call me at work or show up at my office, so I tried to answer his call once a few times. He usually complained about Kelly and John spending too much money and he had run out of savings. They started working part time, but they couldn't make ends meet because they spent it so quickly. It was always about money. I thought if I told him that I didn't have any either, he would stop calling me. I decided to tell him the next time he called. That day, as usual, he said, I need a loan. I don't have any money to pay the mortgage this month. So I responded, Actually, I'm going to resign from my job soon. I've spent most of my savings, so I want you to lend me some money. If you think I'm lying, you can ask someone at work. Hearing this, Alex just said, I see, and hung up the phone. Since then, he stopped calling me. When I told my friend about this, she told me Alex's current situation was much more difficult than I had heard. He ended up getting a less paying job, and most of his salary was taken by the mortgage payment. Not only that, Joe had an affair with the manager of her part time job. His wife found out and filed a civil tort claim against her. In the beginning, Joe claimed that the manager asked her out, and she had no idea he was married. However, based on the exchange of text, she was aware that his wife was pregnant and asked him out. The manager and his wife divorced, and Joe was charged a large amount of compensation. Her friends found out about it, and she lost both her job and friends. Alex's family is paying the mortgage. And the debt created by the lawsuit. It's like they live to pay off debt with debt. Kelly supposedly complains that her friends had grandchildren and her kids are still single and poor. Alex whined to his friend that they fight every day. He laments that he's single now, but women don't pay attention to him. He lost weight and looks disheveled. He's looking much older than his age. What woman would want him? A friend rolled her eyes. 
I told many people why I divorced him. And now this friend is the only one he has. He has no one else to talk to. So he tells her everything. She's the one who introduced us and feels a bit responsible for the outcome. Not only does she weirdly enjoy hearing his dramas, but she keeps in touch with him to keep him away from me. As for me, I have recently founded a web magazine with my university friend. I left my job and spent most of my savings to set up the company. It's a small startup, and I have to do a lot of things on my own, but I'm happy to take her new challenges. I used to be intimidated to start new things, but thanks to many obstacles that have been thrown my way, I'm able to manage them now. And I have a new relationship with a guy I met at work. He respects my feelings and leads me. Thanks to meeting him, I realized that Alex was not the decisive leader, but was just selfish. For a few months after my divorce, I felt like I could never get married or have a boyfriend again. Now I'm able to think positively and want to cherish my new happiness.